Hello fellow woodworkers and welcome to this week's edition of the Garage Workshop. This week we're going to be into this. Roll the intro. So fellow woodworkers, this week's video is about changing around some of the things in the Garage Workshop. I'm a bit embarrassed to say that over the last few weeks, well since Christmas really, I've let things build up a bit and the garage isn't as tidy as it should be. I've got bits everywhere and I'll do a little video so you can see how bad it is. But one of the things that's in my thoughts most is about my uh, wood storage trolley. Uh, here's a link to the video where I made it. It is fantastic, I love it, it's a great piece of kit bar. With the other pieces of um, tools, like my um, table saw and my two benches, my thickness of planar, I don't feel I've got enough space in the workshop for it. And I've also got a space on my back wall there, which really isn't properly being utilised. And the other thing about this storage cart is if I want to go and look for a piece of wood, it quite often takes me a while to sort of dig through and pick bits up to get it in. It's not really that practical for a workshop my size. So I've had an idea, and what I'm going to do is to break down the car and I'm going to use all of the wood that's in it and some other wood that I bought and I'm going to build a shelving system on my wall. I've already got one shelf uh, that runs across the top where I've got my really long uh, pieces of wood on and I think you can probably uh, see it. <laughs> there it is. Uh, there it is. Um, so I want to take those, leave those as they are, sorry, to take the big pieces of wood. But underneath, I'm just going to build a really, really basic shelving system. I'm going to do it all, deck it all out with as much of the reclaimed wood as I can. Now, this workshop is basically, a, it's just a brick, a breeze block garage. So what I did before I started my YouTube channel was I plaster boarded out and I put on insulated plastic board. I plaster boarded out the whole garage using roofing buttons, uh, much like uh, Straw Bite Workshop's uh, video. I basically copied his video, which I think has massively helped. But one of the disadvantages of that is obviously I'm going into plasterboard that's foam backed. So whenever I put anything on the wall, I've got to be doubly, doubly secure that I know what I'm doing. So for this, what I'm actually going to do is build um, a set of three shelves, three shelving racks, and I'm actually going to put feet on the bottom of them. And I'm going to use the feet that are on the bottom also to store wood. So I should be able to store the majority of my wood, except for my uh, bigger boards. But I think I'm either going to rest those in front or find somewhere else for those. So the first thing to do is to clear everything out. And let's have a look at the space. So uh, as you can see, very untidy. I've got my workbench, which has turned into a bit of a dumping ground. I've got the draw doors that I still have not put on yet, but actually, to be fair to me, I'm waiting for uh, the European style fixer hinges uh, to come for that. Uh, wood store from things I've recently taken my old catsuit box. Uh, it's just very messy. There's different bits and bobs in here. Uh, the foam's got to go away. Uh, it's just very, very messy. So I'm going to now work my best to try and clear, at least clear some of this now, and then have a look at where we're up to and what we can do. So it was only when I was clearing this out that I uh, realised how much wood I actually keep. I don't know if you're uh, the same as me, but I keep so many offcuts, even in tiny little thing, things really, tiny bits which aren't really going to be any use to anyone. But we have got a wood burning stove at home, so it is quite useful for that. Uh, the other thing about doing this was I didn't realise until I'd managed to clear and rearrange um, the space how much space that wood cart was taking up. It is taking up a huge amount of space, and now that it's... Um, completely gone, uh, you'll see in the, my next video, um, there's a lot more space in the garage and certainly a lot more space for projects. So I should have enough space now um, to build out quite a little uh, section. I might move, rotate the <coughs> vacuum dust extraction so it goes a little bit further, but I do want to leave enough clearance the other side because that's where I store my ladders. So I need to leave enough clearance to get that in and out. But I think a section from here to here will give us quite a big uh, chunk of space. Let me just measure it and see how big it is. So we've got... <clears throat> so 
So I've got about 160 uh, centimetres, 1.6 metres, which will be enough because it's literally just going to take the wood, the offcuts of wood from on here. So what I'm going to do is shift all of this out and then I'll do a proper measure up of how high I want to put the uh, units and how many layers I'm going to put in because the thing I've got to think about is I need a structure that is strong enough to hold the shelves and to hold the wood but not too big that the shelves take up too much space from the shelf below. So I've got some wood, uh, I've got some off cuts that I'm going to use to hold the shelves up so let's take all this out now and have a look at the space we've got. So when I'd removed the um, main part of the wood, I just took all my sort of flat pieces of board off. I need to think of another way of um, storing these, but as you can see, some of them are really wide and it would be quite difficult to store them unless I kept the cart and uh, put them in there, which obviously I was trying to avoid. So at the moment, I've just stacked them up where my table saw goes um, and they actually fit quite nicely in there. They're a bit out of the way. And obviously I've got to put my saw horses back on the wall because I'm taking up the space uh, that was in there. These two bits of OSB, by the way, I took from that uh, skip from the very well-known coffee, uh, I'm not going to say who it was, you can guess who it was, uh, that I got it from their skip when they were building it. Uh, then I gave it a good old brush up. I remembered this time to wear my um, ventilator because this did kick up a lot of dust. And then I just took apart uh, the homemade whiteboard, which to be honest with you is rubbish. It's one of my projects I had before I had my channel and I'm going to redo that. So there'll be one coming up. Uh, took a little chunk of the wall out there, but nothing uh, to write home about. And I then got my three pieces of timber. I had to use the wall here as a sort of backstop, which worked really uh, nicely because I was able to get them completely level. And I used a clamp just to make sure when I was leveling them that I didn't have any sort of movement. You can see on the right there, trapped against it. So the next thing I did was mark and cut off uh, the ends so that the poles the sort of struts, the upright struts were the correct size. Um, and here, as you can see, the wood I got was, um, it, it was a bit knotty, some of it, but actually these knotty pieces were the straightest pieces. I spent a long, long time uh, going through all the pieces of wood. I got them from uh, Wix to make sure I had the right ones and obviously they had some sap in it as well. I then offered them up against the wall with the sort of leg that's coming into the front and this is mainly to stop it all tipping forward and pulling the entire uh, wall down although when I did put the fixes in for these pieces of wood I did drill all the way through into the brick but I didn't use sort of concrete bolts so having the feet was the most important thing so when I was happy obviously it didn't stay there it was just to make sure they're all uh, leveled off this was my first mistake. Um, this was for putting the holes to join those sort of feet as they were. And as you saw, I had the wood the wrong way around there. I had it widthwise rather than uh, lengthwise. I only realized that when I drilled the holes. But when I managed to sort that out, you can see I did it the right way there. Um, I got them in the right place. And obviously fitting the feet, as I'm referring to them, was the most important bit. So I countersunk uh, just a little screw hole. And here, um, when I drilled the hole, I just used a screw, a long screw, to sort of complete the hole, if you see what I mean. And I thought I developed a really clever way of doing this, the way that you can see me doing now using my uh, marker, but it really didn't work at all. So I just sort of had to use a bit more of a brute force uh, approach. And it doesn't look particularly neat, but it was actually very effective. And I got the three uh, feet on, which was the most important thing because I couldn't really move forward until I got those on. Uh, got them laid out and was able to take it from there. The other thing I realised, and I know I've referred to this in lots of videos, is this particular part of floor over by that wall in the garage is very uneven and they're not at right angles. So when I'd done that, I, the next thing I did was just go along and pop in some holes where I was going to connect uh, and put the raw plugs in the wall. I did, did this now because I knew I was going to be drilling a lot of holes in these pieces of wood and I wanted to make sure that the holes didn't get confused and these were sort of going on the back as it were uh, rather than the front so I wanted to make sure I'd didn't, done them in the right place so I countersunk them all and then drilled all the way through just with a five mil drill bit. The next stage was to um, create the brackets and I had some of this again from a skip I had some of these off cuts of wood which were really nicely uh, thicker and I'm not quite sure what size they were but they were fab. So I cut them all to the same uh, size and I wanted to make sure that the brackets were exactly the same. So I just piled all the wood up, found the middle and drew a line down the middle 
uh, really basic line, and then I literally just use the shape of the wood to create a triangle. And as you'll see, I managed to get four pieces, um, four triangles or supports from each of these pieces of wood, which was fantastic because I haven't actually used a lot of wood here. It looks a lot, but it isn't. Um, so I got them all marked off. Sorry, shoulders in the way a little bit there. I didn't realise the, the camera was that close. And then I just set up my uh, saw and my plunge saw and I took them. I'm not going to say again about the plunge saw, even though it's fantastic. I won't say it this time. Uh, a little bit difficult trying to wangle these the right way around to get them actually uh, cut. And at one point, I just completely abandoned uh, the lines I'd made because it was just too difficult. And I knew I was going sort of corner to corner and you can't really get that wrong. So um, after a while, I just ploughed through all of them uh, with a track saw and got all of the pieces, all of the brackets cut. Now I did realise uh, a couple of these were sort of different sizes to the other ones. I think one of the bits of wood I actually cut was actually my sort of cutting block uh, rather than the ones I'd measured because you'll see one of them is slightly smaller. Not that that makes any difference to be honest. Uh, the next thing to do was to get them all uh, leveled up. I then marked on where I want you can see one there on the left is a smaller one. Uh, and I did rejig them a bit when I um, actually screwed them on. So I got them laid out exactly where I wanted them uh, to be. And this was quite tricky, this bit. I sort of, I don't know how I did this. I, I got, uh, I got um, a drill bit and I just put a tiny hole, like a pre-hole, almost like a pre-drill. And then I went all the way through. But to start this drill, it was on a funny angle. I sort of drilled in and then rotated the drill and went down, which I thought was going to give me really funny holes, but it didn't. I'd actually created the first bit with a sort of force in a bit, which gave me a little bit of a hole. It's just like pre-drilling a hole, really. But I was pleased with actually how the drill holes turned out. The wood was actually quite uh, tough as well. So the next thing to do, I line them all up. I've got a pencil line there. You can't really see it that clearly. Uh, line them up against that and just drove a single screw in from this side. Really important because this was essentially keeping it in the right uh, place. And then what I did was I flipped over and I drilled obviously two screws into each from the other side. And when I did that, uh, you'll see in a minute, I, I included some of the footage, but it took quite a long time. And I, you know, it would be quite boring watching all of that. Uh, but when I did do that on the other side, I tried to make sure that one of each of the screws that I drove in from the back, uh, the sort of screw at the top, was a really long screw. I had some left over from my uh, chicken coop. So I got the force a bit out again, and this is me opening up the holes um, that I'm going to drill through into the wall. I, I took quite a long time over deciding what to do about that and I'll show you what I did in a minute and again here is me just drilling in from the top like I said I made sure one of those screws was a really long one in fact they're all pretty long because there's not a lot of other things to use those long screws on so I did this from all of them and I did have an issue there when as I was drilling it was sort of pushing it down but what I found was when the screw eventually sort of got hold it, it pulled the uh, the bracket up which made it a lot more um, stronger than I thought it would be. So I did that with all of them and when they're all finished I offered them up uh, to the wall and here I'm just literally drilling through into the plasterboard just to make a hole more than anything else and after going back and forth and around the houses I just decided that I was going to use those metal screw-in sort of raw plugs. I've used plastic ones before and to be honest with you I've never had any problem with the plastic ones um, but these metal ones were a little bit more substantial so I started by offering it up. I put in a longer sort of screw at the top. You can see me just putting it in there um, just to sort of get a hold. And then I was able to just feed the screws through each of the holes and then put them through, get them lined up and just make sure um, they were square. You can just see me there um, fixing in the um, raw plugs, the metal sort of spiral. They're specially designed plasterboard raw plugs. And there I am just putting in the central um, sort of screw that's just to hold it really so then then gave me time to get everything lined up and made sure it was absolutely straight and absolutely accurate which it was after I'd done that uh, I drilled into the floor now this I started off by using my normal screwdriver and I had to get the impact driver out in the end these are concrete screws 75 mil concrete screws I've driven in so that is not going anywhere um, and the last thing, of course, was to put the brace in. Off camera, I just marked exactly the middle between the inside of those two posts uh, and put a line on the wall. But it was at this point, 
I, th I felt this wasn't strong or wasn't rigid enough. So I decided to add a couple of braces. So pocket holes, here we go. Wouldn't be a garage workshop video without pocket holes. So I just measured some braces, uh, just four of them um, to fit in, just to give a little bit of rigidity really, and just to make sure it was as, as strong as it could be. Um, I just sort of scattered them between uh, the two sets of upright posts. Um, I kept them pretty close together, not exactly uh, close together, but I was really pleased I did this. It wasn't in my original plan, but it just made everything feel a bit more tied together and a bit more sort of structural, if you see what I mean. I mean, I could have made this whole thing and just pushed it against the wall. Next thing was to move on to the shelves. Uh, these shelves are 30 centimeters, and I used a sort of mixture of board I had lying around, so I used some OSB. That, this OSB, weirdly, was exactly 30 centimeters. This bit wasn't, but the other bit was, which was great. So I put them on, got them leveled up, uh, drew, countersunk some screws into them, and got them all nice level. Off camera, the top one there is a little bit smaller. It's MDF, the top one. Off camera, I just used the spirit level to get them all exactly in line and put a piece of wood there and got them leveled. Uh, here, I was able to use my drill to sort of pre-drill uh, the holes, but then I had to switch to my little Parkside very handy Parkside electronic screwdriver to actually sink the holes in because it just fitted under the wood above. That's in the best special buys next week, by the way, that Parkside drill is fantastic. Okay, so uh, the project is uh, finished and now I put all the um, shelves on. I have to say I'm really pleased with um, how it's turned out. I know it looks a bit sort of weird having different types of wood on it, but A, as I said in the beginning, I didn't, didn't want to buy any wood for this and B, it's going to be covered in wood anyway so you're not really going to see it only the edges and if i'm worried about that i can always put some edging on it but i'm really pleased with how it's turned out it's very very strong um which obviously it's going to need to be um I do, i've left the bottom shelf the very bottom shelf without anything on it and there's a reason i might want to put things on the floor or i might want to put some tools or something on it at a later stage so i've deliberately left that one on boarded but the rest of it i'm really really happy with it um I'm surprised how sturdy it is, and obviously it is going to be taking a lot of weight. So the most important thing was there was no danger of it falling forward. That's why I put these uh, braces in that I hadn't originally planned on doing, uh, just to give it a bit more uh, rigidity. So, very pleased overall. Um, it turned out exactly as I thought it would in my mind, and quite often when you're doing woodworking projects, it doesn't happen that way, so I'm really pleased. Thank you so much for joining me on this week's edition of The Garage Workshop. If this is your first time on the channel, please can I ask you to subscribe, like and comment and look through all my back videos. I've got quite a few on, I think I've got over 50 videos on there now. If you are a regular viewer, thank you so much for your support and for all the comments. Please keep it up. I really enjoy reading them and getting your feedback and I reply to everything I have. I hope you have an amazing week, woodworkers. I'll catch you on the next video. Take care.